this is Ananya Sriram Rajan. I'm here to give the TOS presentation uh, for the activities going on in the countries of Argentina, Brazil, Costa Rica, and the United States. The TOS president in Argentina is Noberto Cicerelli, and, I'm, and he's the director of the TOS in Argentina. Uh, unfortunately, Norberto sent in a video, uh, but due to technology, it wasn't uh, possible to be able to screen the video here. So he sent his greetings in the video saying that he was the director of the TOS in, and he brought fraternal greetings and wished us all a very successful meeting. He'd like to thank everyone in the TS and the volunteers who make the TOS work possible. One of the activities that's taking place in Espinillos, Argentino, Argentina, is um, a project to teach children not to litter, as well as the benefits of recycling. They started a campaign called Espinillo is not your garbage dump. The project was supported by the municipality of Rio Cuatro and publicized by the local television stations. It's an ongoing project, but Presently, it has been halted due to COVID. The new coordinator for Espanol is Ms. Marcela Rinaldo. Other activities um, that are taking place uh, or have taken place, a sewing machine was donated to this mom with her little four month old baby to help her provide an income for her and her child. In the town of Casilda, uh, a province of Santa Fe, Argentina, money was donated to a scholarship association to help one or two students. I think this is an ongoing project, um, but the scholarship helps the students with items that they need to study, as well as help fund their education. The TOS <clears throat> also raised $5,000, which was donated to Children's City, an institution that cares for 30 children abandoned by their families. The institution actually was in danger of closing, so the donation was imperative. An equal sum of the $5,000 was donated to the city of, uh, donated by the city of Holmberg. In 2019, the TOS in Buenos Aires held conferences on the life and work of Mahatma Gandhi and Mother Teresa. Non-perishable food items were donated and funds were raised which were donated to help other philanthropic organizations. The TS Center in Buenos Aires was renovated to start an after-school study support program for high school children as well as to create an archives to house the numerous TS magazines donated by members. The city of Rosario, the TOS there, plans to organize ag educational activities and workshops for children ages six to 16. The objective is to enhance the creativity and give children a place to meet as well as build friendship. Activities such as organic gardening, painting, and carpentry are hoped to be developed once COVID restrictions are lifted. Other than these activities that have been mentioned, the TOS in Argentina also participates in battery recycling, the donation of household items, as well as food items to those in need. Programs for underserved children work with animal shelters and has started a new healing group in Las Pereiras, San Rafael. That happened in 2019. The new coordinators for the TOS in San Rafael are Sergio Donner and Nancy Cordoba is the new coordinator for Rio Cuatro. In Uruguay, the coordinator there, Mrs. Emma de Souza Liel, is, ha, has been in touch with the coordinators of Argentina in order to start activities in Uruguay. Oi from Brazil. Brazil has been a very busy uh, TOS group. 
Uh, the TOS president in Brazil is Mrs. Teresa Botaro. One of the activities they did was a campaign to support a fellow theosophist, Valdir Haman. Two of Valdir's paintings were raffled off uh, to raise money for uh, an illness or a procedure he might have had to have done. Um, it wasn't very clear. Um, but 6,000 reals was raised, which was quite a sum of money. Another activity that Teresa and her group have, been do have done is to campaign to buy furniture for uh, these children that are in the picture here. They um, are housed at the headquarters of the Theosophical Society in Brasilia. Another activity was to raise money to help Kelly with her eye surgery, this young lady at the bottom of the screen. And as you can see, the corrective surgery was successful. Tree planting is also an activity that they have taken place. In the top left-hand corner is Teresa with her husband, Sergio. During summer school, a bazaar was uh, done to raise funds for Centuario dos Faras, which rescues and cares for abandoned animals in Teresopolis, Rio de Janeiro. The TOS also campaigns for the adoption of rescued animals. The poster on the right is asking for donations of any amount to help sterilize the dogs. The TOS in Brasilia also explores plant-based diets and an ethical lifestyle through lectures and workshops. The TOS in Brasilia also raised money through another bazaar for Vida Positiva, a volunteer organization in Brasilia that helps children with HIV. And pictured on the right-hand side, this group picture, is the TOS art group that met in Arocaju um, during their summer school. In Costa Rica, Lejia Mantia Lungi is the coordinator for Costa Rica's TOS, and I'm going to let her give her greetings. Queridos hermanos, reciban un fraternal saludo de los miembros de la Sociedad Teosófica en Costa Rica. En Costa Rica existe la Orden Teosófica del Servicio desde 1904. Aquí, como somos un país pequeño, no tenemos tanta actividad como si se desarrolla en otros países grandes. La Orden Teosófica del Servicio en Costa Rica tiene el servicio de curación donde se pide por la salud de los enfermos. También la Orden Teosófica del Servicio en Costa Rica se dedica a proteger la vida animal. Y también se hacen recolectas para a final de año llevar a diferentes instituciones donde se requiere ayuda. Tales instituciones son, por ejemplo, asilos de ancianos orfanatos. Eso sería básicamente lo que yo podría contarles del trabajo que realiza la Orden Teosófica del Servicio aquí en Costa Rica. Un fraternal saludo. Muchas gracias. In the United States, um, we had to reassess our work for the year. We had a number of activities planned, but of course, because of COVID, everything sort of changed. However, when COVID did take place, we sort of got to work right away, finding out what was the greatest need. At that moment, with cases uh, surging and hospitals being very, very busy with the sick, we decided to do meals to medical emergency workers. This not only helped the hospitals um, and supported the medical staff, but it also helped a number of restaurants that were struggling due to the sudden 
uh, end of being able to have the restaurants open. We publicize this activity through Facebook, our newsletter One Heart, and our website in order to raise funds. In Chicago, um, a few of us went shopping at a, a local store, um, a Costco, which is a warehouse uh, for larger amounts of food. And we bought snacks for 100 medical workers. Um, in the picture on the right, uh, we also donated, we got a restaurant to donate uh, donuts and breakfast foods to one of the local hospitals in Chicago. Once we got Chicago under our belt and figured out how to work the whole thing out, it didn't take long for others to jump on board. We ended up with um, someone, a volunteer in, near Seattle, Washington, who donated, uh, got meals donated to the Harbor View Medical Center. As well as in Detroit, Michigan, there was a Mediterranean restaurant, Harmony Garden, who helped donate food to the Detroit Medical Center. Food was also donated to the UCLA Medical Center in Los Angeles, and as well as to a hospital in Fairfax, Virginia. That's a picture of one of our TOS volunteers, Suzanne, and the restaurant staff after she went and picked up sandwiches. But our activities sort of got limited, so we decided that one of the things we could do was to provide inspiration through our newsletter, One Heart, and our Facebook page. So we have been posting uh, inspirational things from different TS leaders. At present, I believe we have N. Sriram's Thought for Aspirants being posted, and we've gotten a great response from it. A number of people really love checking out what the post is for the day and then starting their day that way. It's been encouraging for emotional and mental well, you know, well-being. Other than that, our, our activities continue. We uh, are continuing with our scholarship for the Oglala Nursing School. This remains one of our most popular projects. We get a lot of donations for the Native American work that we do. This is our latest scholarship recipient. Her name is Bethany. And we also help support the Lakota Waldorf School. Um, we have found that donations not restricted or designated allow the school to decide what is best for the school to use. So one of the projects that they highlighted this month has been the language program, which they are working and fine tuning in order to help the children preserve their culture. The children, as many people know, in remote areas and poorer areas, they're the hardest hit with the COVID pandemic. So the children have been sheltering in place and home learning packages have been sent to the homes so that the children can continue learning. We cannot thank anyone enough for the amount of donations that we receive. This year, we were able to provide grants to the following organizations the Vietnam Humanitarian Foundation, the Lakota Waldorf School, the Oglala Nursing College, the Alcott Educational Society's Women's Vocational Training Program, the Annie Besant Animal Dispensary, the Adyar Theosophical Academy, Indralaya Diversity Fund, the TSA uh, Theosophical Society in America's PRISM Program, and the Golden Link College. This has also allowed us to leave aside a little seed money to encourage local TOS groups um, to start projects of their own. So that remains all the projects that we have been doing for the year of 2020, this remarkable year that has completely changed the lives of many of us um, and many organizations throughout the world. I'd like to thank everyone who provided us material to be able to do these presentations, and I wish the convention the greatest success.
And thank you to all of you who put this convention together. It takes a lot of work. Thank you.